Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And very good afternoon. Um, it's 12 o'clock, so I'll just start straight away. Now, um, first of all, thank you, Regina, for um, letting me know that there are actually a few slides that I have not um, covered during the lectures. So what we're going to do today is we're going to cover on all the slides um, for about half an hour or so. And then after that, um, what we're going to do is uh, I will just show it to you guys on how to actually use Spectrum exam. Okay, so this is for your final exam. So we're going to have a look on that. And um, what you can do, what I'm actually showing you guys is, especially if you're using a PC, um, if you're using an iPad, then it's a bit difficult to follow through. But otherwise, um, you can actually go to Spectrum exam, you can log in, and then we can do it. We can actually do all the kind of like stepwise thingy um, that you need to do for your final exam together. Instead of just, you know, um, me showing to you guys, you can actually follow through. Okay. So what I've missed last time was on the aspect of how do you actually measure um, enzymatic activity? So we've looked at uh, enzymes. We've looked at how you, uh, well, very tiny bit on um, how do you actually produce an enzyme. We've looked in more detail on how do you actually purify an enzyme. Okay? But we did not look at, say, for example, if you do have the enzyme, how do you actually um, measure the activity? Okay, So it's quite general. Um, we just pause that for a while. I have to take this call. Right, sorry on that. Um, okay. So we're going to look at on how do you actually measure the activity. Okay, so um, bioactivity, uh, activity. So when, when I'm talking about how do you measure the activity, so activity is a measure of concentration of a formation of a product or a disappearance of a reactant or substrate. Okay, so when we are talking about um, enzymatic activity, these are the things that we're going to look at. So we know that, you know, uh, based on the general equation that you guys learned, you have substrate you have plus an enzyme, you form the enzyme substrate complex, and then you're going to uh, reproduce the enzyme and your product. Okay, So these are the measure of activity. Instead of looking at the kinetics and whatnot, these are kind of like a brief definition. Okay, So either a formation of a product or a disappearance of the reactant. Okay. So there are a few determination methods uh, in, in the sense that if you are to measure the activity, there are multiple ways that you can do. First one is you can do a titration. Okay, uh, It's kind of like how you actually do your SAMB titration where you titrate out your substrate um, into a beaker containing your enzyme and whatever else that is needed and you can see the progress. Okay, Or you can do uh, absorption or emission um, analysis, um, I've written here is photometric measurement. So you are looking at um, changes in an aspect of a molecule, either a molecule disappears, meaning that if you actually can trace the molecule itself, once it's disappeared, you can actually do a tracing. Okay, Or um, you can do other ways. For example, looking at um, cell death. So um, an example of this is, um, say, for example, you want to see um, an activity, uh, um, the activity of an enzyme, okay? because we know, um, in general, enzymes require energy. So it does work, but it requires energy of some sort. Um, and um, in our body, in, in our cells, for example, one of the energy source is either glucose, or glucose have been converted into what we call as ATP, okay, adenosine triphosphate. So this is the kind of like uh, energy molecule in our cell. And once it's being consumed either by um, the enzyme or by other entities inside the cell, it will transform into ADP. 
adenosine diphosphate. So initially it's triphosphate. So it's phosphate, you know, everybody knows phosphate. Hopefully you have a three phosphates. And then when you cleave off, when you hydrolyze one of the phosphate, it becomes two phosphates. And the break of uh, the phosphate bond produces energy that is required for a certain process. Okay, so that's one way by which you can actually um, determine uh, activity of an enzyme. Okay, so um, in other words, since activity of a, since activity or the formation or disappearance is an act over time, okay, it requires constant monitoring. So that's what we call as uh, that can be done using an assay. Okay, because um, you don't simply just add in something and then it disappears straight away. So there's, of course, time points. So uh, what you can do in an assay is you can actually measure the time points. So um, this is just another full definition. Uh, the basis of, a, of an enzyme assay is a, a proper determination of a reaction process. So proper here, I, I put it in the word scientific. So scientific determination. Um, because otherwise, if you just mention about proper, um, those who do not know what scientific methods, they can just do something and then say, oh, it's, it's proper, okay? Um, one case in point, which is not related to, um, to, to uh, the enzymatic activity is when people say that the earth are flat because if you're looking through a binocular um, at a distance of about nine kilometers, you can actually see you can still see it. if it's a concave, like a spherical earth, then you shouldn't be able to see it. Okay, so that's one way of um, saying a proper, but not scientific. Okay, so that's that's the reason. That's uh, but I'm not gonna talk about flat earth now. Okay, we just focus on this. Okay, so determination of reaction of process, a concentration of reacted substrate. So that's one way, or you can look at the concentration of the product. The concentration is converted into the amount of substrate that has been changed in the reaction mixture by consideration of reaction volume. Okay. So of course, if you're talking about concentration, you need to talk about volume. Okay. So there's no such thing about as concentration without volume. You can know about concentration, but without knowing the volume, then it's a bit difficult for you to track down all the processes. Okay. The volume of the sample is irrelevant since the reference is the amount of enzyme that is applied. Okay, what do I mean by here? What do I mean by relevant? Irrelevant is that when, when you're talking about an essay, if you're measuring an essay, the volume doesn't change. Okay, so if you say, for example, you have a, a, a beaker, say a 100 mil beaker, okay, and then you have all the substrate in here and then you add in your enzyme, okay, after a while, you still have your 100 mils of solution. Okay. So what's changed is the entity. The molecule itself now be from a substrate becomes a uh, product. Okay. Or from a substrate, now the substrate has to consume. It either produces energy, carbon dioxide, and whatnot, which is not measurable anymore. If, for example, if you burn a glucose, um, it can produce heat, it will produce carbon dioxide, so you will not get anything. Uh, sorry, I will try and get the phone this time.
Okay, sorry about that, advertisement. Um, now, where were I? Uh, so, talking about the volume, say so the volume doesn't change, okay? So, uh, since the reference is the amount of enzyme that is applied. So, the reference meaning that the concentration of the enzyme that is applied takes into uh, takes place, takes into a priority um, in contrast to the volume, okay? The volume of the reaction is irrelevant. Uh, so enzymes are usually applied in an aqueous solution, of course, buffered um, and measured volumetrically. Um, volumetric, okay. So you know concentrations per volume. The activity of enzyme can be considered as equivalent to a reagent uh, concentration. That is a correlation factor of activity and volume that allows the dosing of enzyme. So this is just a like a um, how do I say this? Um, just talking about how do you actually measure the activity. In other words, um, you always go back and look into moles equals concentration times volume. Okay, so basic um, chemistry that you learn during your first year. And of course, when you're talking about um, all this enzyme activity, um, you need to have a monitoring system, which we will talk about it soon. Okay, so since activity or the formation or disappearance uh, is an act over time, it requires constant monitoring, as I mentioned. Also, an enzyme is recyclable, thus the activity reflects on the concentration of substrate. Okay. So meaning that if you are looking at the activity of enzyme, you're not just looking at the activity of enzyme, you are also looking at the um, substrate itself. Okay, Because to the end of the day, per the equation, you need to have a substrate, you need to have your enzyme, then you're going to have your product. So if you just have an enzyme, no substrate, it will still not work. Okay, So this is what the sentence means. So uh, we will see this in the next few slides. And um, as an example, we will use an absorption-based uh, assay. So that is the easiest, the simplest way. And uh, even though it's simple, straightforward, everybody's still using it, okay? Because that's one of the best way uh, by which you can look at the activity of enzyme. And of course, to the end of the day, you can measure the kinetics, uh, which is also a part of the consideration and what we've looked at um, previously. Okay, so um, an absorption assay is a measure of a chromophore. Okay, so the chromophore, um, again, in chemistry, chromophore is a molecule that can uh, absorb a certain wavelength. Okay, so the, the molecule can either be the substrate or the product. Okay, the key information is, um, the key information that you need to know is that Make sure that the, the reaction is uh, converting from a substrate to a product so that you can either measure the increase in, in the concentration of uh, product or the decrease in the concentration of substrate or in some cases where the substrate converted into something else that is not measurable, then you can see the disappearance of the substrate only. Okay, So um, you can measure the absorption spectra Again, substrate or product. Um, and uh, another two key information. So I will, I will talk about that in more detail in the next slide. And the other two key information about uh, absorption assay is number two, you need, this is number one. Okay, so you need to know the reaction itself, that's number one. Number two is you need to know or determine the best absorption wavelength. Okay, so we will talk about this um, in the next few slides. And number three, you need to create a calibration curve. So this is basic um, and it's also related to your uh, analytical chemistry. So analytical one, uh, in the laboratory experiments, you need all the calibration curve. So same principle applies here in an enzymatic assay. Okay, and of course, um, once you're talking about calibration curve, you always go back into the Lambert law, okay? All right, so this is, um, the idea on you need to um, understand the reaction. Okay, so you need to understand the reaction. So this is an example of trying to understand the reaction, and at the same time, um, giving an example on how the change of a chromophore. Okay, so say for example, if you have this reaction, you have LDH, which is um, I know this slide is not in your lecture notes, uh, so just listen. Okay. So LDH is a lactate dehydrogenase 
Uh, enzyme is an enzyme. So this is your enzyme. Okay. And now you have two substrate and two products. So that is substrate number one. You have pyruvate, substrate number two, you have NADH, um, and then you form product number one, which is L lactate, and product number two, NAD plus. Okay. So normally in an enzyme, you need to have something like this. Normally, it's not just simply one substrate, you plus one enzyme, and then you get something. There must be either cofactor, coenzyme, energy um, molecules that can um, give off energy or um, <clears throat> intimidates. Okay. So in this case, even if the, the reaction itself, um, LDH, act on pyruvate, so converting pyruvate into uh, L lactate, but the LTH enzyme will not work without the presence of NADH. Okay. So this is also one of the substrates, so to say. So um, it's not the substrate that act on the active side, but it is also nonetheless the substrate that is required for the enzyme to actually work. Okay. So um, LDH converts pyruvate to L lactate in the presence of NADH and NAD. And if you look at the chromophore of the um, substrate one and product one, so pyruvate and, and L lactate. So the, the only chromophore here that you can see is um, the double bond. Okay? So either the conjugated double bond on the pyruvate or just a single double bond um, on the carboxyl okay, of the L lactate. So if you just think about this, um, and when you are trying to measure the um, absorption, uh, absorption spectrum between those two, those just look at the, the first two, S1 and P1, okay? So what you will see is that if you actually do uh, measure the absorption spectra of both molecules, because they have rather similar functional groups, okay? So they, they will not be much difference in, in the terms of the absorption spectra. So um, if you're just trying to measure pyruvate and lactate, it will not work, okay? However, if you look at the other substrate, is anyone saying anything? No? Okay. So if you, look, if you are looking at the other substrate, which is NAD uh, converting to NADH, you can see that the absorption spectra of NAD, the blue one, is different at this particular region compared to NADH. So if you're trying to do um, an LDH enzymatic activity assay, what, you're, you, what you will look at is instead of the disappearance of pyruvate or formation of lactate, you can measure the formation, the change in NADH into NAD because of this. So NADH initially is very high at this particular wavelength and now it becomes reduced. Okay, so this is the wavelength that you uh, normally use. Of course, you can use that particular wavelength as well. But if you look at the absorption um, max value, it's close to uh, the uh, maximum of for a normal spectrometer. Okay, so some spectrometer can go above two, but um, roughly, generally, uh, to have a very accurate reading. reading I would say all spectrophotometer can measure accurately below one. Okay? If you go above one, it depends on the spectrometer. If the photospectrometer is very good, brand new, high with the all the highest technology and whatnot, then perhaps you can measure above one. Um, but otherwise, you normally focus on the uh, values that are below one. So in this case, if you do a cut off of one, Thus, the wavelength between 300 to 400 is the best. And by looking at the lambda max, then you can see roughly about, what was it, about 340 okay? um, nanometer is the lambda max, which is the highest uh, values that normally you will use to be able to actually um, look at in very detail in the change between the um, uh, absorption of either the, the disappearance of the Tractin, or you can you can see the presence of the product. Okay, in this case, you're just looking at the disappearance of the um, reactant. Okay, so change of NADH to NADH plus is an exudation process. So this is an example of change of chromophore. Okay, 
So in the second one, you need to know or determine the best absorption wavelength. Again, this is related to the previous slide so that you can ensure the uh, minimal interference, you no know overlapping peaks between the substrate or product, uh, maximum sensitivity. So again, uh, if you look at the graph here, you can actually use 300 nanometer or mm, about 375 nanometer. You can still see the change, but it's not maximized. Okay, so the maximized value is when you have the lambda max. So this is kind of like a ref, uh, re revision for your analytical. So it requires a small sample size for measurable output. Okay, so why? Because it requires only a small sample size. So a small change can give you a, an accurate reading. So um, in other words, which I've already showed you guys in the previous slide. So um, it's something like that one. Okay, so of course this is not an enzyme, but this is just an example. So when you have um, two molecules um, that have, uh, so in this case, it's, it's a very um, good example, okay? So if in a dispersed form, the absorption spectra is like that. In the aggregated form, it has a different absorption spectra. And then from here, if you are trying to measure the difference between the absorption, uh, whether the aggregated or the dispersed, then you can look at this particular wavelength at about 600 nanometer. So this is an example for a uh, uh, gold nanoparticle, uh, but same principle applies for um, enzymatic reaction. So what's important is you need to know that reaction, you need to understand the reaction so that you can determine which one will be the best example, uh, which one is the best option, uh, best molecule that you want to look at that you want to observe okay so you can just draw this graph similar to um how i you, you have this graph okay if you want all right so and the third one is you need to create a calibration curve so absorption versus concentration again this is similar to how you learn um in analysis one the okay? analysis lab one so uh be a little bit law uh, absorption equals to molar excision coefficient times concentration times distance or path length. Okay, so then you get your um, absorption spectra. You can either get it like that, or depending on your concentration, of course. But at one point you will reach the two. Okay, somewhere there is a the two, and this is normally between uh, 1.5 and above. Okay, higher than 1.5. So what you want to look at what the concentration that you want to use. Uh, for your analysis, uh, when you get you when you have or when you can actually observe a uh, um, direct correlation between your absorption and your concentration without any changes in the um, exponential value. Okay, so you want to see the direct correlation. So you have learned this in your second year during your analysis lab, as this is just mentioned and um the the in, in general okay so when you are doing your um enzymatic assay so you have three entities you are um general of course you have s1 s2 as i've shown previously but generally you have three entities you have the substrate you have the enzyme and you have the product okay and the reaction scheme is as you guys have learned previously so either you want to include the ES or not, it doesn't matter. And then towards the end of the day, you're going to regenerate the enzyme plus the product. Okay, so that's the general scheme. And, and so by controlling at least two entities, okay, so the third entity can be determined. Either, um, say for example, you um, have a sample, okay, um, a sample from, uh, what do I want to say? Um, fish. Okay, so if it's a, an example from a fish, um, and you know that one enzyme that can can be used, or if you if you want to look at the freshness of a fish, okay, not just a simple fish, you want to look at the freshness of a fish, uh, because everybody knows fish stinks. This is this thing smell on a fish, so they must be something, okay, um, that causes the smell. And um, normally, the smell correlates well to the freshness of the fish. 
a fresh fish doesn't have any smell but once the fish turns bad this is a smell so you know there is something there's a molecule that causes that so the smell is the product so to say so um, there must be an enzyme or something that catalyzes the changes between a substrate to a product so if you are trying to do an experiment on looking at the freshness of fish if you can identify the molecule either the substrate or the product and the enzyme you can actually do kind of like a, a measure um, and you can see uh, how many hours it takes for the fish to actually turn from good to bad and stuff like that okay so these are basic principle um, on learning enzymatic activity okay because towards the end of the day if it's a originally a living thing then it must be an enzyme um, playing an important role okay another example is uh, this is part of my expertise looking at toxicity profiling of um, drugs okay so in uh, in in developing drugs what we do need to do is say for example i have designed a drug okay the drug has one phenyl group and whatnot so it can be a, or even a peptide okay um and in in analysis um normally once you do uh, you synthesize the product you're gonna test it to the target if you know that it can inhibit so again inhibition it can inhibit the target then it is a good candidate for a drug but before it can actually manufacture or you can actually produce uh, the drug that can be consumed by human you need to look at one particular entity uh, one parameter which what we call as toxicity profiling you need to look at whether the, the drug that you design can actually kill a living cell a normal healthy cell okay so when when we are doing the toxicity profiling what we are looking at is we are actually looking at the kinetic activity of an LDH, okay, lactate dehydrogenase. The same example that I gave you, um, I've shown, shown it to you guys in the uh, past few slides, okay. So LDH is a good example uh, by, by which you can measure the activity and then um, the activity correlates to the cell death. So the more cell, um, if say for example if you have a beaker then okay, um, this is just an example a beaker containing 100 cells okay when you add in plus your drug and then um, say for example if only 50 cell died what will happen is each cell that uh, died um, what will happen is they will release LDH so that equals to increase in LDH okay so increase in LDH as you've shown uh, as you can see previously is that it converts an ADH into an AD plus of course um, you need also you also need to have a pyruvate and then pyruvate will be converted into a lactate okay um, but I just focusing on NADH because this is what you've seen what you can see Okay. So what you will see is that if you have a graph, okay, initially L, uh, NADH concentration is high, as uh, if you have more, um, say for example, if there's no cell death, what you will see is you will see the LDH activity, or uh, because you are measuring the concentration of NADH, okay, you will see the concentration is kind of like flat, because there's no LDH activity. Okay, but if you do see, um, say for example, if you're looking at 50% cell death, then you can see uh, a certain flow. Okay, if it's 100% cell death, then you'll see something very, very sharp like that. Okay, so from here, you can actually use enzymatic activity uh, for a different purposes. Okay, in this case, you are not measuring, you are not looking at the LDH activity for biocatalytic activity per se, but still, uh, by knowing how the enzyme activity works, by knowing the principle behind it, you can actually utilize it for something else. In this case, uh, one example that I'm um, giving you guys is to look, uh, to do a toxicity profiling. Okay, 
So this is an example. And this is how the uh, LDH is being used. Okay? So damage cell or cell that will release um, LDH and it will be in the same principle as what I've shown you guys in the very beginning and convert, um, I think it's the other way around. Um, lactate to pyruvate. Uh, I took this from here. So I need to recheck which one is right. But it should convert pyruvate to um, lactate. Okay. Or perhaps LDH can do the other way around as well. So yeah, it's, it's the other way around. It's the same thing. You guess you can see here, and the DH and pyruvate on the same side. So again, enzyme is uh, equilibrium. It's always in equilibrium. So of course, um, either or is fine as long as you know the reaction. Um, so and because it's in equilibrium, if you add in one material, then you will learn Ch Chatelier's principle. It will push to the other side. Okay? Either or is fine as long as you understand what is the um, the process that is involved. And in this case, for example, they have another indicator. So um, if you're just looking at NAD and NADH, um, the chromophore is at about, what was it, 350 nanometers, which is not a visible spectrum. But if you add in um, something else, okay, in this case, uh, tetrazoleum salt, uh, initially it's probably blue in color. Once it's formed uh, from a zone with in the presence of a different enzyme. So now you have two enzymes working together, not just one. It forms a formazine. So formazine color is red, it's in visible spectrum. So you can actually um, look at it in uh, a better way. So instead of using a UV vis, now you can just use a, a visible spectra. Okay, so this is just an, um, an example. Okay, and pretty much that's all for. All the lecture notes. Okay. Um, so moving back to where I left last week. Okay. So uh, the summary of this course basically, you should be able to classify natural products according to the structure and metabolic pathway. In this case, it's more focusing on peptides and proteins. Okay. And the other is basically on um, this one is Prof. Kalijas. Okay. So the others are from Prof. Kalijas section. So apply appropriate extraction and separation method for natural products. Again, part of it is based on how you extract enzyme. Uh, for my side and for uh, Prof. Kalija's side, it is on however she uh, actually taught you guys. Okay. Um, I did not touch anything about uh, spectroscopic data analysis. Okay. So this was uh, this session or this CLO cost learning outcome is being covered by Prof. Kalija 100%. And number four, illustrate the use of biochemical and biotechnological methods in chemistry. Okay, now, um, I had this question last time. Um, Doctor, what are the differences between biochemical and biotechnological approaches? So basically, I have a few slides. Um, the only difference between those two are terminology. Okay, so what we've learned so far, I always say enzyme activity, uh, cellular activity, and whatnot. The terminology is just this. Biochemical is focusing on enzyme for chemical process, while biotechnology is using cell for chemical process. Okay, so it's just a keyword that I'm using. It's different than this one because I want you guys to understand it a little bit more uh, in more detail before actually going into the terminology. The terminology is um, like very simple. Okay, so you need to understand the both concept when uh, when you will be able to achieve then. Self -win. Then you'll be able to achieve the learning outcome number four for this course. Okay, so um, for example, um, enzyme technology. So in, instead of enzyme technology, it will be biochemical. While fermentation and genetic technology manipulation it will be biotechnological. Okay, but otherwise it's the same. Um, I do not want to use just the two terminologies because biotechnological, there's so many methods that you can use. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm giving you guys a more specific example. One is fermentation, the other one is genetic technology. Okay. So if you just simply Google, if I just left with biochemical and biotechnological, if you are interested in looking for more information and you actually search for biotechnological, then you'll see like so many things about biotechnology. 
Okay, so that's why I didn't use the terminology in the first place. So we've covered all the materials and then I give you guys the terminology. So I might use either terminology. So what's important is for you to understand which one is which. Okay. So um, this is just an example. Um, if a question asks using biochemical processes, illustrate blah, 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 blah. So you should know that because it asks for a biochemical processes, then it should be talking about enzymes. Okay, so extracted enzyme. While if the question asks using biotechnological processes, then you need to talk about cell. So the main key, the key difference is, um, well, if you're talking about uh, cell, then it goes back into how do you, you need to include the information on um, how do you actually modify the cell so that it contains the enzyme of interest. While if you're talking about enzyme, uh, biochemical processes, you don't have to. So those are the only differences. Everything else should be almost um, identical. Okay. Um, this is just an example. I do believe that you do have this slide. Okay. So relate back everything uh, to everything that you have learned about enzyme technology. Okay. So enzymes and enzyme and biochemical. Okay. All right. So these are the references um, that I've used not throughout. So there are more references. As you can see in some slides, I actually put down the um, web address. Where do I get the information from? Instead of putting it here. Okay. Um, yeah, but that's it. Now, um, can you guys just open your poll EV? So since we've covered all the materials, uh, we have two weeks left. So one week will be used for um, your quiz. And then we have one remaining slot okay so can can i ask oh wait i need to turn it on let me turn it on for a while so i just need to know whether oops um oh. i need to know whether you guys are interested uh are more interested in doing you know, just finishing all your activities, doing your quiz, and then, you know, completing everything done. Um, or, oh, is it on? Oh, it's already on. That's cool. Okay. Or if you want to do something else. But those who selected something else, you need to give me a suggestion on what this, what is the something else that you want to do. Okay. Either you want me to give an example or you want to explore more about activity or whatever it might be okay um, otherwise we can do quiz um, option number one is we do quiz next week and then we'll do a discussion on that particular quiz on week 14 or we can do a tutorial um, next week and then so on the following week on week 14 you will do your quiz okay either or is fine um, it depends on your uh, group uh, availability because to the other day um, so why do i have this um, poll it's because i want to know whether you actually have a lot of um, alternative assessment that you need to complete okay so oh wow how how is this possible <laughs> how do we manage to get um uh no rank so there's only 12 responses um come on guys you need to um i i need more info for tie break tie breaker who would be the tie breaker um one two and three give you guys 30 more seconds to change your mind otherwise we will do a tutorial discussion on week 13 and then do a quiz on week 14. Okay, looks like it's not changing anymore. Um, there's only 13 responses. There's more than seven of you who are missing. Am I? Um, okay, so if if that is the case. Come on, guys. I want to make sure that everybody contributes so that nobody can say 
that you know your opinion doesn't matter okay so this is when this is where your opinion matters all right so i'm closing the poll in five four three two one okay so we will do a tutorial discussion next week but of course if it's a tutorial discussion then it will not be just me talking okay um, because otherwise it will not be a discussion so this is a lecture so it's fine if i'm, I'm the only one who, who, who's going to talk but next week um since it's a tutorial discussion then um if that's the case may i know um can you just press the head uh, rise uh, raise hand button if you are currently you know in your my gesture um, status you are a close contact anyone now has a close contact um, status in my gesture please just press your raise hand button if you do because I know there are a few lecturers now uh, because of the new system in Mass Jetra. So we had more issues. Um, there, there are more lecturers who are in close contact. Um, even though everybody is actually um, not sick, everybody's healthy. Nobody. Okay. So if that's the case, will there be any issue if I would like to ask everybody to be present in UM next week? So that we can do a more tutorial or discussion like instead of doing something online you will be here and then we, we can just do uh it as online instead of uh, as physical face-to-face -face instead of online anybody wants to see that they can't raise your hand now otherwise uh, i will ask everybody Shafika, uh, are you somewhere far like in Penang uh, or... Yes, doctor. I'm at uh, Kelantan okay, now. I'm you. still in recovery yeah. process. Can you repeat? Uh, I'm at Kelantan and I'm still in recovery process, doctor. Okay. okay. Um, um, anyone else? Other than Shafika, anyone else? Anyone else? Hmm. Uh, doctor, I'm in Melaka now, but if the class going to be uh, fully uh, in UM, I, I can come. Okay, so um, this is for you guys. So otherwise, what we will do is I will just still do it. Um, uh, we will we'll just do, do hybrid. But of course, if you want to do a tutorial discussion, then it will be a tutorial discussion. Okay, so you need to talk pretty much. If you guys can talk, um, even if it's online, then I'm fine. Otherwise, you know, sometimes it's it's way better to actually pinpoint you guys in front of me instead of asking you, um, you know, calling up your guy, your, your name um, using an online system. Okay, uh, but anyhow, we will do it as hybrid. Um, those who can come, by all means, do come. Um, I'm hoping that you'll get better and of course if you do have any questions that you want to clarify we will use that time next week to do all the clarification um tutorials and whatnot okay and then on week 14 we will do our quiz um and and if i do have a free time i will do a recording on the answers then um, i will post it to you guys before your final exam okay all right now um that one is done Okay, we decided on doing that. So the last one, the last thing that I'm going to talk about is, um, oops, sorry, again, spectrum exam. So if you go to your spectrum exam, okay, um, and then go to SID 3020, what I have here is, um, of course, this is a link for your final exam. Uh, it is not activated yet. Um, Okay, but what I have here is a trial. So I would like you guys to go and um, have a look, have a try on this trial. This is kind of like, this is, um, if you look, if you look, actually open it, um, I want to see if you guys can actually 
do this trial um, using, of course, um, for your final exam, it is a requirement for you to actually use a Respondus Lookdown browser. Um, the university requests that all final exam to actually use one Spectrum exam and then two to use this Respondus Lockdown browser. Okay, so um, have a go, have a go, have a try, um, and make sure you submit. Okay, so if you submit, if you have tried and you have submitted the answers, I will know. Uh, if you have not, then if you do have any issues in your final exam, I cannot do anything. Okay, so you need to make sure that you try. You need to make sure that you try, and if there's any issue, let me know so that we can try and solve it. Okay, do not wait until your, the day on your final exam and then tell me, Doctor, I cannot do this. Doctor, uh, my browser is not working properly. Doctor, blah, 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 this and that. Okay, so have a, have a go, have a try. Um, so what will happen is basically, um, I cannot try it because otherwise uh, it will actually close this meeting. Okay, so w once I click on launch lockdown browser, uh, my browser will be blocked. Um, all programs that I open, will be asked to be closed okay and then i actually prepared seven questions in this module so try because these are the types of questions that can uh, that i can actually use in your final exam it will not just be a multiple choice it can be fill in the uh, fill in the blanks it can be a short essay uh, but unfortunately it will not involve in drawings um i cannot use spectrum to ask you guys to draw um i can ask you guys to draw on a piece of paper and then take a photo and then upload it but it's too messy um so i prefer to have everything at one place so this is where you will try and see um and and get accustomed to the type of questions that i might ask okay all right so i think that is all for today um if you have any question you can raise your hand and ask now um otherwise yes regina doctor uh for our quiz is also spectrum exam i uh, know i know oh just final exam yes, yes. just just a final exam so this spectrum exam is just for um you guys to try um but unless if you do want it to be in the spectrum exam then we can do it in the spectrum exam no thank no, you no, no thank you it's fine, it's fine. Sorry, okay so i'll just use normal ones because you know um i think i mentioned to you guys previously that i don't like to use spectrum exam <laughs> i don't like to use this platform um but anyhow um i still need to do it for your final exam uh but uh, for all the quizzes and whatnot i will still use google form okay Doctor, Doctor, for this trial uh, one, uh the questions are like legit question or it's just trying this thing so this one yeah oh. is it like our subjects question or it's just normal just for us to test to unmute this okay so it is a legit question um you can try it there's seven legit questions um that you can try if you want um if you don't want then you don't have to do it Hey, but I highly encourage that you try. It's simple like that. Okay, any other question? Doctor, uh, for the final exam, we need to open the camera, is it? No. Thank you, uh, Doctor. Because I'm not sure whether you guys will have, you know, um, will have a good internet connection or not. Um, where will you be, Nisha? Will you be in Melaka or... You'll be in college during the exam uh, week? I probably will be in Malacca. Yeah, okay. So I'm actually considering all of those things. So that's why I'm not asking you guys to open your camera or not. Um, if, if it's up to me, I will just ask you guys to do it in Google Form. But, you know, um, instruction is instruction. So the university asked me to do it using Spectrum exam. Then I have to force on using Spectrum exam. And you guys will be forced to use Spectrum exam as well. Okay, anything else? If there is nothing doctor. else. Yes. Um, so for our final exam, the whole proctoring thing would just be 
on the laptop as in we cannot access other websites instead uh, of like the camera and the microphone is it yes so uh, you will be blocked to access all other websites um, from your device but of course uh, everybody have a mobile phone please do not use a mobile phone okay um, I cannot force you guys to actually use mobile phones or not, uh, but um, just just please be honest, lah. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. And um, what I will also have is, uh, I actually have I actually will have a supplementary information for you guys. Um, and that's one of another reason why I'm asking you guys to try and use the 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 questions that I've set up on Spectrum Exam. Okay. Um, and let me know if you can actually access the uh, supplementary. If you can't, then I need to figure out on how to allow it. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So if there is no other question, um, thank you, everybody. Um, and um, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you, doctor.